This may not look like a typical farm, but our plants bloom in every corner of the state. From flowers to decorations, to fruits and vegetables, even homemade jellies and jams, we take pride in producing the best for you. You may ask why we do this. Like my parents, we love what we do and plan to pass on our family business to future generations. It's our way of life, providing for our family and yours, the Farm, farm Families of Mississippi. Mississippi. Coach, obviously two back-to-back -back quality starts from, uh, you know, from, from Will and, and Christian put you in the best position possible. How, how would you kind of assess where you are right now pitching-wise? Yeah, we're in a good spot. I mean, um, <clears throat> I thought both guys were really good. Um, not their perfect starts. I mean, there's a ball hit here or there, but once Christian uh, settled in there in the second, um, man, he just took off. And I, or maybe it was the third, I'm not sure. But after that, I thought the middle part of the game, he was phenomenal. And um, we ran him back out there in the, what was that, the sixth, and he was, he was still really good. Um, his stuff was good. Probably lost a little bit of command, and they put a couple swings on him. But I like the way he competed tonight. That was the biggest thing. And I thought the same thing about Will. These teams, this is an offensive regional. There's some really good hitters here, and they've both done a great job. And I thought Brandon and Parker were really good there at the end, just pounding the zone. When, when, Chris, when you send Fox Hall, when he gets ready to go out there and speak to Christian, what are those conversations in the dugout like? I mean, who makes the call, hey, we need to go, what are we seeing here mechanically or whatever? I mean, you know, because it looked like Christian was kind of messing with his fingers there, like he had a blister or something, and he said he was just sweating. But, you know, what's that conversation like between you and Fox? There is no conversation. Fox just takes off like a rabbit. So it's not me. It's Fox has full reign. So he, he makes those decisions. And as the head coach, I, that's what I want. I told him even today, just he's, he's been hot with all the calls. I said, man, get out there and whatever you want to do. And we talk about pitching changes or getting a guy hot or not, but, you know, something like that. That's, you know, I don't know if I've made, gone out and made a, had a conversation all year long. If you ever see me go out and just have a conversation, it's usually about defense. Um, Fox is, he's the pitcher whisperer, I guess you could say. And, um, you know, he's a lot calmer than I am. Tyler Herka, go ahead, jump on in there. Chris, the game really tightened up there in the top of the sixth, but then you guys get to the bottom half of that inning and have one of your better innings at the plate all season. Just how important was that for this game, obviously, kind of put the game out of reach, but it feels like you got some guys going, and that could be huge for you guys in the postseason going forward, too. Well, the ability to expand the game in the postseason is huge. We had an opportunity the inning before, and we didn't. Um, and then you get it, get out there, and you put that big – you know, we, we responded to their inning – um, because it, it let us rest Landon Sims another night. So it gives us him for tomorrow and uh, gives us an opportunity to, to run him out there in a win situation. So um, that was the big piece of it, and it let us get some guys. Even getting Parker. Parker hadn't pitched in a couple weeks, and uh, he's been working just like you know Cam's been working, everybody's been working. But, man, Parker was really good tonight. And that type of velo this time of year, um, he can be a weapon for us. Go ahead, David Murray. <laughs> you, we've talked before about Rowdy Jordan being kind of a slow starter season, a fast finisher. Well, in double play, he's 6 of 10 now. He's driving in runs. He's scoring runs. He's hitting doubles. Just talk about what he's giving you at the top of the order for an offense that really needs to get something going this time of year. Yeah, he's been a. He's also been a great base runner. You know, he, he had two big base running plays in last night's game and went first to third tonight. So, um He's one of the best players in this part of the country, in the whole country, and um, he does play well this time of year. And I'm glad he's on our team. He's been hot. He's got some big swings. Um, man, he's, just, he's making us go right now. And so um, he's been really good, and hopefully he just stays hot. Theo, go ahead. Uh, once again, Brad Cumbus, I'm big at the bottom of the lineup. How much power does this lineup have if those guys are producing what they did tonight? Well, I like the lineup when you have uh, the Twin Towers there at the back. Um, you got you got two guys that got a chance to do some damage, and they've done that in the last two games. Uh, Brad's been really good. Um, not real tough on the HBPs. I feel like he's not going to make it to first both times, but he's been – his swings have been good. He's been really good. I know he was happy to get hit 0-2, I think, tonight um, in that one at bat. But he's been, he's been really good. He's a great defender. He's a good base runner. I mean, he really moves for the – Kellum does too. For two guys that size, they move and run around and, and put pressure on the defense. So uh, they can be a weapon for us at the back. Got time for a few more. John Sokoloff. 
Chris, kind of going off that, but you guys have averaged about 12 runs uh, per game in your first two games in this uh, this regional. You mentioned what the whole lineup has kind of done for you, but what about like their approach at the plate this these last few days has kind of uh, shown or, or you know gotten your attention? No, nah, just uh, it's been a little bit more patient. I mean, we talk a lot this time of year. It's easy to get big. It's easy in the inning that we didn't have success with the bases loaded. You saw us get a little big, try to do a little too much. Um, and Goat's great. I mean, go 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 has those guys locked in. Scout and report, early work. I mean, all those type of things our guys do. They've been pretty locked in of just man trying to hit balls hard. And uh, you've seen that the last two days. I mean, there's just been so many great swings and um, swings and RBI situations that. You know, the nine spot tonight, um, it was just good at bat after good at bat uh, to keep us moving. Bobby Falk? Coach, have you decided on your starter? No, we're going to take a look and watch tomorrow's game and then kind of go from there. Who in your mind are the, oh, sorry, who Robbie, your, go ahead. Who in your mind are, are the candidates, you think, for all that? It's kind of like a midweek game for us. We're better when we just pitch a lot of different guys. So we'll, we'll kind of – I'll talk to Fox and we'll check it out. So – Steve, go ahead and wrap us up. If you had been told before the regional started you'd be two wins in in a winner's bracket and not having to throw a Landon Sims uh, yet, you know, how, how would you kind of feel about the performance and kind of where you stand? I'd feel great. That's a, that's a big, you know, having Landon in your back pocket. and We were close to going to him tonight. I mean, it was close to, you know, because he can throw three or four innings at a time. So um, having him ready, you know, ready for a win, and we'll have him tomorrow. I mean, he hasn't even cranked up yet. He's just played catch. So um, being 2-0 and and being in this bracket is is huge. But like I told the guys, I mean, it's uh, there's still work to be done. And we didn't come to win two. And there's going to be a team that plays a great game tomorrow and it's going to be waiting for us in that other's winner bracket. And uh, we're going to have to play good baseball. These teams are all good, and we're going to have to we're going to have to match whoever comes out of that game tomorrow. I would feel you're seeing the baseball well tonight. I mean, just kind of take me through your evening. I mean, uh, had big hit after big hit after big hit tonight. Yeah, you know, um, it's been a rough stretch here for the you know last few weeks. So, um, me and Goat have been working a lot, um, trying to get better. Um, just take it day by day and um, stay confident in the box. Um, I feel like you know at the tournament um, at Alabama, I was putting good swings on the ball. Um, I felt good, you know, this week in practice, and um, to be able to come out and execute today. Um, felt really well. Quick follow-up on that, too. It's pretty rare for a guy to move back to the three-hole and get out of a slump. But all of a sudden, that's what happens. I mean, are you just more comfortable there? What, what, how would you kind of explain it? Um, you know, I'm not real sure. I think um, I'm comfortable in the three-hole and the five and uh, the five spot, you know, when we switched me and Logan. But, um, you know, I think, you know, wherever I'm hitting the lineup to try to do my job, whether that's, you know, get a run in, um, you know, with a ground ball to second or – if I'm running to one, hit a homer, um, just, you know, wherever he puts me in the lineup, um, just try to produce as much as I can. We'll go ahead to Theo DeRosa. Theo, jump in there. Uh, Cam, obviously the bottom of the order had a pretty big night with uh, Brad and Kellen getting those home runs, but the top of the order, you, Rowdy, TA, all have three hits. How much can that open up your offense when the top of the order is producing like that? Oh, well, um, you know, when, you're, when your first three guys are going like, like we did tonight, um, you know, I think it just kind of frees up the whole lineup, the, really the whole game, whether it's defense, pitching, you know, when you get runs on the board. Um, and then, you know, especially when the back end of the lineup is, is producing like they were tonight, um, it's just huge. And you know, when we get the whole lineup going, it's we're going to be dangerous. John Sokoloff. Hey, Kim. Uh, kind of going based off what, uh, what Theo said, but do you think your guys' kind of offense is maybe not peaking, but, you know, like trending in the right direction? Absolutely. Um, we come to practice every day, getting ready to work. Um, you know, I think we have the best hitting coach in the country. Um, we come out, you know, every day, putting good swings on balls, you know, getting better. Um, and then, you know, tonight it kind of showed, paid off. Um, you know, we've been having good at bats. We had good at bats last night or yesterday afternoon. Um, and I just, you know, I think, like you said, we're rolling in the right direction at the right time. Phil Coleman. Cam, you were mentioning earlier about your, your struggles earlier in the year and things. I just curious, I mean, did, did your confidence ever waver at any point? I know that you had some defensive struggles, you know, struggling at the plate a little bit, but just what did you do to kind of, you know, stay in it? You know, did you, who was kind of there to, to, to boost you up or did your confidence waver at all? Just how did you kind of work through that? Well, you know, all my coaches and, and teammates are behind me in everything I do. Um, you know, I try to stay, stay confident. I'm the same player I was, you know, when I make a mistake as I am when I have success. 
Um, I come to the field the same every single day. Um, I'm a confident player, whether you know it shows or not. Um, you know, I just try to go out there and do my best and do whatever it takes for the team to win. Next up, Tyler Horka. Yeah, Cam, I guess on the topic of those struggles, you haven't had a lot of multi-hit games of late, but you got two in one inning starting that rally in the, in the sixth with a single, and then you end up hitting the home run as well. Just how good did it feel to, to do that? I mean, like I said, not a lot of multi-hit games, but you get two in one frame. Yeah, so, you know, like I, like I said earlier, um, I feel like I've been putting good swings on balls um, a lot lately. I am having really good at-bats. Um, so tonight, you know, to see, see that ball get out, see that ball get through the infield, um, you know, the first two singles I had or the first double, um, you know, it was good to, you know, to see it get through and, and get to be on base and know I got a hit, um, especially since, you know, maybe it's not been going my way as of late. Got time for a couple more. We'll go to Robbie Falk. Cam, y'all were just living on the bases early in that game, and y'all put up six runs, but, you know, they cut it to six to four right there. Y'all had the bases loaded and, and only got one run out of it. What were y'all, what were y'all talking about, um, you know, after those at-bats and, and coming into the bottom of the six, too, after they closed that lead? What, what was kind of the offensive approach, and I guess uh, how did you feel like you did that sixth inning? Yeah, well, you know, we, we knew they weren't going to lay down just because we, we got six runs. You know, they, they put some runs on the board, made it a close game again. Um, I think, you know, that sixth inning we just came in, um, kind of the same approach we, we always try to have, just do your job, you know, um, get good pitches to hit. Um, and, and that inning, I don't feel like we missed many pitches. We didn't swing, swing at many pitches out of the zone. Um, I think that was the inning Kellum and, and Brad went back to back. Um, so, you know, I think it was just kind of, you know, executing our, our plan and our approach. David Murray, go ahead. Cam, you broke out of the slump as far as hitting, but last night you got on base three times without a hit. You walked, you got plunked by pitch, you scored a time, you even drove in a run. Did that kind of help put you in the mindset to free you up to come out and start hitting again, just having success last night? Yeah, for sure. You know, getting to come out in my, my first regional game, you know, I've ever played. Um, and, and, you know, maybe not – um, do well as far as stats and, and average and hits, but you know I, I feel like I did what the team needed me to do um, when one, when runners were in scoring position. Um, you know I got a couple of those in. I feel like I was seeing the ball, having good at bats, and that always gives you some confidence. Christian, it looked like that you were um, looking at your fingers a lot early in the ball game, and was it a blister issue? Was it a hangnail issue? It just seemed like that was good, uh, some discomfort for you, but you're able to kind of overcome it there in the third. What, what's going on there? Yeah, I got a little sweaty uh, after the bullpen. It was just really humid outside. Couldn't really get a grip. And, uh, you know, I came in and used the rosin bag a little bit. And, you know, I just was struggling to find a grip early on. But, you know, uh, licked my fingers and all that and then used the rosin bag. I was fine. And then Foxhall comes out there with arguably the best mound visit of the year because uh, you went from throwing nine straight balls to retiring eight straight hitters. What did he say to you, and uh, you know, and how were you feeling at that point? You know, it was really just minimized. You know, obviously not how you want to start an inning, throwing nine straight balls, but, you know, um, I just knew I needed to settle down, bear down, and, um, you know, minimize as much as possible and just attack the zone. You know, I should have done that to start off the inning, but, you know, I thought I uh, made the correction I needed to maybe a little later than needed, but, um, you know, it worked out. Bobby Falk, you're up next. Christian, I know you had that tough end to the to the outing in the sixth inning, but how did you kind of assess what you were able to do? I mean, you, going into that inning, I think you had given up two hits and uh, limited the damage in, in that one inning with the three straight strikeouts. How did you kind of assess your performance? You know, I thought it was a good outing. You know, I, I, I didn't think I had my best stuff, obviously, <laughs> uh, compared to some other outings, but, you know, I, I thought I competed as much as I could have. You know, I, I left it all out on the field, and, you know, obviously I hate – Giving up a home run to finish the outing, but, you know, um, that's part of it. But I competed my butt off, and that's all I could do. And that was the most pitches I think you've thrown since you've been here, 123 pitches or whatever it was. How were you feeling coming into that inning, and as the inning kind of uh, kept going, how were you feeling stamina-wise? I felt great. Um, you know, even when I came out of the game, I still felt great. Um, kind of hit my second win going into the sixth inning. I think I was at, like, 96 pitches going in, I still felt strong. On Sokolov. Christian, what, what do you think it was uh, later in that fifth? Because, you know, you started out that frame and, you know, you retired 
couple of hitters, and then obviously, you know, they were starting to chip away at you a little bit there. What do you think it was? Because, you know, you just said that you were fine, you know, fatigue-wise, that you weren't tired. Yeah, I think it was, uh, you know, I struggled a little bit with my changeup tonight. You know, I was cutting it more than uh, I needed to, and it was kind of running into a right-handed bat than running away from it. And, you know, that's something I'll work on in my bullpen this week is getting that uh, shape back to normal. But I think that was just a little bit. Left a few pitches up. Joel Coleman, go ahead. Christian, we heard Cam talking about uh, kind of some of his struggles of the year and things, and, and he's had a little bit of a roller coaster of the year and, and had some bad luck hitting balls hard right at people sometimes. But just curious, what's he been like in the locker room as he's kind of dealt with the slump and, and uh, kind of an up-and-down year a little bit at times? Just what Has he kind of, I guess, maintained his uh, demeanor, confident demeanor the entire time? Or just kind of what, what's he been like behind the scenes? No, he's been great. I mean, it's, it's baseball. There's going to be slumps in baseball, and, you know, I feel like that's a team-wide thing is that, we're one of the tougher uh, mentally teams in the nation, I feel like. And, you know, we're not going to let a slump or something get the best of us. You know, we're going to come up to the field each day and, um, you know, work our butts off. And that's all we can do. And, um, you know, Ken's a really great player. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see what he can do. Got time for a few more for Christian. We'll go to Theo next. Christian, you couldn't get through the sixth there, but then your offense comes out and puts up nine runs. How much confidence does that give you, and just how good does that feel knowing that they can back you up like that? Man, they were awesome all night, and, you know, when we get the hits and the dude starts going crazy, you know, you can't beat it, especially as an opposing team coming in and experiencing that. You know, it's, you know, we're, we're lucky to have such a great fan base and everything, and having offense do what they did tonight, you know, that was special. Go ahead, David Murray. Christian, let's go back to that uh, third inning where the tying runs are on base and the, and the best of orders coming up. Do you even think about the fact that those are their big guns coming up and did that help you bear down or, or focus a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, you got to know who's coming up in the order. You got to know um, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. And, you know, that's where as a pitcher, you got to, you know, have a knowledge of the game and know who's coming up. So, um, yeah, I guess it helped me focus a little bit more. And, um, you know, my mentality the whole time was like, all right. Um, don't let these runs score here. You know, just compete, throw strikes, and um, let defense play. Steve, go ahead and wrap us up. Christian, you mentioned your first regional experience. So, uh, how did it measure up to your expectations? I mean, you you put your team into a regional final. Now you're in the winners bracket. You have to lose twice, and uh, you battled through some adversity and had the crowd on your side. I mean, so how would you, how would it me measure up to your expectations? It was awesome. You know, uh, when I was getting stre stretching out for the game and everything, you see everybody racing to the berms and everything. You know, it's, it's pretty special having this kind of atmosphere, and, and I'm excited to go out and play in front of another great crowd tomorrow.